Hey guys, today we are going to discuss about one of the important drug which is the Celecoxib. So Celecoxib. So we'll discuss everything in detail about this drug one by one and tell me what class it belongs to. What class it belongs to. Celecoxib belongs to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug category it is a NSAID and celecoxib targets which enzyme what is the target here so what is the target of the celecoxib it mainly targets cox 2 enzyme remember it mainly targets the cox 2 enzyme so based on this, we have to discuss about the actions, right? Based on this, we have to discuss about the actions. So we know that the celecoxib binds to COX-2, but without permanently deactivating it, meaning it mainly inhibits the COX-2. The type of inhibition is reversible. The type of inhibition is reversible and selective. Very, very important it is. The type of inhibition, it is reversible and selective inhibition. Meaning, the celecoxib binds to COX-2 without permanently deactivating it. Selective inhibition means it only binds to COX-2 but not the COX-1. Right? So, therefore, Whenever it is binding to COX-2, the COX-2 inhibition, uh, this particular isoform mediates the inflammation, mediates the pain and fever. So therefore, this particular drug can be given to reduce the inflammation. Use it, uh, it can be used as an analgesic as well as antipyretic, right? And also it is prevalent in inflammatory cells as well as in the vascular endothelium. So that is the main function what will happen if COX-2 is inhibited. Got it guys? So what happens if there is a COX-2 inhibition? What happens if there is a COX-2 inhibition? So what it does? So this mediates mediates inflammation right mediates inflammation mediates pain and also responsible for reducing fever i mean i'm talking about the drug so cox2 is responsible for mediating inflammation pain and fever so whenever this cox2 inhibited it, the inflammation, pain and fever will be reduced. And remember that this COX-2 is mainly prevalent. Where it is mainly prevalent? The COX-2 is mainly prevalent. Where exactly it is? In the inflammatory cells. Inflammatory cells and vascular endothelium. So this is what you need to remember prevalent in the inflammatory cells as well as in the vascular endothelium. I said that there is a selective inhibition of COX-2. So whenever I say that there is a selective inhibition of COX-2, you need to remember that it spares, it spares COX-1, right? Obviously, it spares COX-1. So unlike other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the celecoxib does not inhibit COX-1. So therefore, which helps maintain gastric mucosa and also reducing the risk of gastrointestinal issues. So therefore, whenever any patient who is suffering from like gastritis or acidity, so this gastritis and acidity will be, uh, the severity may be increased. Uh, whenever we take uh, the COX-1 inhibitors. So because whenever we give celecoxib to those patients, then because it is sparing the COX-1 binding, only it has the COX-2 inhibition, it uh, helps maintaining gastric mucosa and reducing the 
risk of gastrointestinal manifestation so sparing cox1 what is the main effect guys tell me what is the main effect it helps maintain gastric mucosa gastric mucosa therefore there will not be any acidity kind of issues what we will see in the patients whom we give celecoxib and also another very important point is there will be no effect on platelet function no effect no effect on platelet platelet function so what is the meaning of like no effect on platelet function over here tell me remember cox1 is actually responsible cox1 is actually responsible for the production of thromboxane a2 right cox1 is responsible for the production of thromboxane a2 and whenever the thromboxane a2 is produced it is responsible for the platelet aggregation so what is the function of thromboxane a2 here platelet aggregation right platelet aggregation so since celecoxib spares cox1 is does not impact the platelet function so there will not be any effect on the platelet function so these are the two important points you need to remember by sparing cox1 so in what conditions it is mainly used so what is the clinical use clinical use in what conditions we are going to use the celecoxib here so it is mainly used in the rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis and it is used in the osteoarthritis and it can also be used in ankylosing spondylitis ankylosing spondylitis right and uh, it is also used in preventing preventing polyps right and also sometimes for the menstrual pain too menstrual pain so these are the main uses of the celecoxib now what are the adverse effects here so whenever we are talking about any drug we also have to discuss about the adverse effects too adverse effects adverse effects of the celecoxib so there will be a risk of thrombosis guys risk of thrombosis so by selectively inhibiting cox2 the celecoxib may alter the balance of uh, pro thrombotic and anti thrombotic factors leading to the clotting risk so there will be a risk of thrombosis what we will see and therefore uh, the careful consideration to be taken in patients with cardiovascular diseases or those at higher risk because of the risk of thrombosis and also celecoxib mainly contains a sulfonamide group so therefore which can trigger the reactions in the individuals those who are having sulfa allergies so another important thing is sulfa allergies got it because it contains the sulfonamide group so for example if you are giving this drug to the patients who are known for sulfa allergies then the symptoms will be in the form of rash fever and difficulty in breathing so these are the manifestations we will see if you give this drug to the patients who are known for sulfa allergies right yeah so what are the other possible side effects these are the main side effects but what are the like least common or other possible side effects we can say that gastrointestinal side effects will be there but these gastrointestinal side effects are less common when compared to that of other non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs but it can still can cause like indigestion abdominal pain or nausea which are pretty common with the majority of the drugs too so therefore i don't want to list them over here but 
it has a potential effects on the renal function that i want to mention it over here so mainly uh, therefore it is very important that regular monitoring may be needed because it has a potential effect on the renal function renal function and it may also contribute to increase in the blood pressure so therefore caution need to be taken whenever you are giving this drug to the patients who are suffering from hypertension so the fourth the least possible side effect will be increase in the blood pressure got it guys so these are the possible side effects so if you want to take a very quick review of the celecoxib drug it belongs to the non steroidal anti inflammatory drug right non steroidal anti inflammatory agent and only inhibit cox2 the type of inhibition is reversible as well as selective right so the cox2 mediates inflammation mediates pain and also uh, mediates uh, so many inflammatory mediators responsible for the development of the fever so whenever you are inhibiting cox2 automatically any pain which is associated with the inflammation as well as fever will be reduced and cox2 is predominantly present in the inflammatory cells as well as the vascular endothelium and the main effect of the celecoxib is it spares cox1 the what is the main function of the cox1 it um, uh, acts on the gastric mucus also therefore there will be gastritis issues and acidity will be developed in the patients uh, who are uh, taking high doses of um, these enzymes which blocks the cox1 so whenever it is sparing cox1 it helps to maintain the gastric mucosa and also there will not be any effect on the platelet function whenever a patient is taking celecoxib mainly because cox1 is the one which actually responsible for the development of thromboxin a2 which in turn causes platelet aggregation so which can't be there so it is mainly used in the conditions like rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis ankylosing spondylosis and also preventing polyps and menstrual pain and adverse effects is mainly in the form of risk of thrombosis and especially because uh, the sulfonamide um, group is present uh, the patient who are known with sulfa allergy may develop rash fever as well as difficulty in breathing renal function may be a bit compromised because of taking this drug and also increase in the blood pressure so this is the overall review what you need to know about uh, the drug known as the celecoxib okay thank you so much and we'll meet in the other video